Welcome back to Gatekeeper Media's coverage of the 2023 Skona Open. I'm Andrew Fish, joined here by Max Rigitnik. How's it going, guys? This is part of the Swedish Disc Golf Pro Tour, and we are delighted to bring you lead card coverage of this round two front nine. Max, what are we looking for on the course today? Yeah, we're here at the Bultofta Disc Golf Course, uh, like we saw in round one. A lot of tight trees by the basket, tight trees off the fairway, so keeping it clean and getting those clean looks at birdie is imperative. And you see our lead card, uh, some hot scores put up in that first round by by these folks. Eight, seven, and two sixes. Those are pretty good scores on this course. I think definitely double digits is attainable if you if you keep it clean. Absolutely, and we saw uh, a lot of folks who are still in the mix. Yeah, hole one, uh, 110 meters, a little uphill, a little OB on the left there, as you see by the ad walls. Most people, I mean, pretty straight shot. Pick your poison, backhand, forehand. Um, Andish, definitely a backhand dominant player, looking maybe a fairway driver. Nice little turnover. And Andish, Masters Age player, kind of playing with the young bucks and putting up a really solid f first round. Yeah, Andish, definitely a legend in Sweden, five time national champion, uh, always in the mix. And here, Colin Molestam. Caught up a little early, it looked like. But nice looking forehand. Yuan, local here in Malmö. Definitely has put a lot of reps on this course. And going to overturn but still stay in the open. That's a pretty good result. And Linus Axelson. Yeah, coming from Borås, same hometown as Linus Carlson. So maybe a little inspiration there from, from Linus. Little right, might have to work for his par. Yeah, this is a lot harder than you want to have to work on a pretty open hole. Just having to pitch out and flirting with that left side. Yeah, definitely not a gimme for par, so he's going to have to work for his par there. But nice out from, was that Colin? So yeah, has a five meter par putt there and yeah even just lays up for the bogey that's probably a responsible uh decision a lot more scoring holes out here don't don't test it too much early in the round you one gives a good bid maybe just didn't get his legs into it as he had to straddle out from the the rough there and Anders misses the birdie putt early um i would say putting is maybe one part of his game that is left a little there for desired he's yeah sometimes gets in a little bit of a rut there but hopefully he can i mean it's looking pretty windy out here so putting might be tough all the way around sure you can hear that in the camera microphones as linus also in for par mm. and a little squirrely there from Johan. bogey from Coldland. So no birdies there, but let's hope for a couple here. Hole two, 105 meters playing downhill. Out of bounds line to the right and long of the basket, as well as left if you uh, hang it out pretty wide left. We saw left to right moving shots yesterday. Interesting to see what a more backhand oriented card is going to choose. Yeah, he had a mid in his hand. Gets that pretty high. Again, looking like it's pretty windy out there, so a lot of airspace to do something weird with the disc. But, I mean, circle's edge looks like, so putting at least. I heard a compliment from one of the card mates, so uh, perhaps the, the conditions are more severe than it appears if a circle two look is being uh, complimented. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> definitely these courses in Malma are open and exposed, so... When the wind picks up, they're they're not too shielded, especially with these elevated uh, tee shots or, yeah, getting it up in the air might be a little dangerous. And this is pushing too far right, it appears, and is going to go out of bounds. Oh, 
call in a much flatter release, getting the distance first before starting to swing back. I like that height, but also flirting with that left side OB. Looks like he curls just in time, but I did like that height on that shot, keep it out of the wind a little more, and just pick something overstable and a predictable flight. Looks like a layup from your one. Just take an easy par, stress-free. This will be a par attempt after the out-of-bounds stroke for Linus. Decent bid. Tough with that downhill in the wind. You never know if it's going to lift or drop, even if it's a tailwind or headwind. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Max, you got to manage that nose angle properly. Andush, letting me eat my words. <laughs> Sinks that nice 9, 10 meter putt for Birdie. Great comeback from Linus and for the bogey. And I imagine a couple pretty routine par tap ins coming. Yeah, definitely one that's pretty straightforward, but that much elevation in the wind can definitely, yeah, have some, some strange results. But hole three, pretty similar to hole one, uh, uphill 106 meters, OB left, and that sloping green to the right. Um, yeah, backhand, forehand, pretty straight. And I believe we're playing back up the back up the same hill that we played down on hole two, so expect the wind to be opposite as well. Yeah, I couldn't quite tell if it was what kind of wind it was on the last hole, but it's definitely prevalent. Anders getting caught up early right there. Might have a bit of work to do for his par. One pretty pretty reserved straight shot up there. Maybe not attacking the pin as much as you would in wind-free conditions. Call into the backhand here. Gets most of the distance, but finishes over on the left side as well. Yeah, it might be a little scary putts putting toward that cliff behind the basket, but... And this, a better hyzer flip line, but not with the width it needed. Fortunate tap out to the left. Andesh from a very difficult position tries to play an air bounce. Will get a birdie or a uh, par putt out of it. Yeah, pretty well done from there, I think. Andesh definitely known for his putter play, like throwing that putter, those P2s, hyzer flips, um, hitting lines. He's definitely crafty with the putter. Again, Yuan maybe just conceding the par, not wanting to risk too much too early. Ooh. Very good bid there from Coldland. And our fourth birdie attempt. And going to sail over the basket, leaving another comeback putt. Definitely leaked a little longer than it looked like it should have, but definitely gave it a good bid. Mm. That might be danger there. But maybe settled if Linus is the next to putt. But great putt from Linus. That's two consecutive putts where he seemed more confident on the comebacker than the initial attempt. Yeah, and I mean, both Linus and Colin, I'm not ch too familiar with their game. I haven't seen them play, but maybe just some lead card jitters. Um, this is obviously a pretty big tournament in Sweden, so definitely maybe just feeling out how the, the nerves are feeling. Yeah, Max, can you speak to to what this means to Swedes to, you know, just be in contention at a Swedish Pro Tour? I mean, the Swedish Pro Tour is a pretty new addition to, um, yeah, Swedish tournaments in general. But um, uh, National Tour has always been a, a part of the Swedish Tour, so they usually have four or five A tiers. But Swedish Pro Tour, definitely a new thing, and... Anders is unfortunately unraveling here. He he can't get off the hole. He's Cup. he's tried several times. And I mean, he's missing them, but I'm not sure if we missed a upshot there or if he's electing to putt from the same spot. 
but looks like he is having a day. Um, but I mean, missing putts, but getting unlucky with these rolls, like just get, get, getting an edge and on this cliff, it's just, they don't stop. And it appears that he had rethrown, took the penalty stroke and then picked up that same putter to go putt from this lie. Yeah, that's a tough one. Cards the double digit 10. And a clean par tap out. I just think the plastic is very premium. It's a high quality material. The way the disc feels in my hand. I think it's the quality of plastic. It's unlike any other plastic that you'll find in the industry. The quality is better than any other company out there. Again, just consistent plastic. It's something I can consistently trust on every single throw. There's so many discs to choose from and I guarantee if you tried every disc in the lineup, you're gonna wanna put multiple discs in your bag. It's extremely high quality. You can only say so much that they have to eventually just try it themselves and see. Hole 4, 81 meters, playing slightly downhill from the open into a wooded gap. I think speed control is a pretty essential part of this shot. You need to have it moving straight and then skipping short of the basket as it's hard packed uh, as you get into the circle. Yeah, common feature on this course, a lot of hard packed uh, greens. So definitely controlling those angles when you come into the green um, to get those short short putts are it's pretty important but throwing putters mostly putters or mid ranges into this green so controlling that speed and yeah looks like we got two birdie putts coming and excellent weight there by Colin and a little flippier play looks great equally rewarded most certainly a P2 and Andish's hand. Um, I mean, maybe just trying to come calm down from that uh, whole three blunder. Um, I mean, I'm sure he's he's uh, boiling. And Anders, plenty experienced, but uh, you got to reckon it's been a while since he's taken a ten on a par three. Yeah, I mean, with the wind and. The putting woes, like once it starts, it might just be a snowball effect where you just, you might as well have just try to get a short. I mean, and these were short putts that you were missing. Like, so it's not, you can't blame him for running them, even though there was danger on the green. Right. He just got unlucky with hitting the cage, getting on the ground on a weird angle and then rolling away. But a couple birdie tap ins there from Linus and Colden. So nice to get them on the board. First birdies of the round. We saw that Johan wanted no part of a comeback putt. Yeah, laying up some putts early, um, maybe yeah, due to the wind, um, not wanting to, to. I mean, he's played these courses often, so when it is windy, maybe he knows what he wants to score. Uh, hole five, probably one of the more signature holes in the course. A fun little turnover, 121 meter basket is blind from the tee. Uh, but those rock, that rock wall is a pretty good um, target just to hit something over that and hopefully stick close to the water or to the pin. But um, yeah, Colin finding the water on that one, maybe turning it over a little too much in this headwind. And much more stable shot from Linus. He gets pin high uh, and we'll see what kind of funky line he has to work with. Yeah, a lot of birch trees there. Um, I mean, he's probably edge of circle two, but I would say unlikely to have a clean line <laughs> through there. It looked pretty thick. The designer definitely asks you to not just get the distance, but put it in line with the basket. Yeah. This also overturned and going to find the out of bounds. Looks like some significant headwind. Uh, people are, yeah needing to trust the stability of their disc and throw that straight shot but proving to be difficult in this headwind yeah both of the shots that ended up safe were probably quite considerably uh, conservative playing that overstable driver and just playing it out to the left 
looking like the drop zone here. Colon putting it nice, getting a little action on the ground, but should have a reasonable par putt. Uh, that'll be his four putt, I believe. Four is par four. And with that wind read, Yo on leaving it a little wider, hoping to kill the speed on a spike. Nice upshot from Yo on. Hopefully a putt that he doesn't have to lay up there. Andush playing pretty conservatively into the green, hoping to just get that, that par and move on. That was what Linus was left with from the tee, so looks like he got most of the way there. Should be a short par cleanup. Nice looking putt from Colin for the par or for the bogey. Yeah, good high to low action. I like that Linus didn't try to put it pen high. Um, I know he didn't cash in on his putt there, but sometimes it's it's more important just to give yourself a makeable putt rather than trying to be heroic. Yeah, and especially with all these trees close by the basket, it's yeah maybe a little too optimistic to try to try to make it from there, um, even if there is a line. Yuan also tapping in his bogey. And it looks like, yeah, Andush missing his par putt, so bogey frame all around. You can certainly see how that'll happen on a hole like hole five. Definitely a hole that's not to be taken for granted, um, but definitely a fun shot when it's not that kind of a headwind. Mm -hmm. Hole six, 62 meters, very short technical shot. Hit at the gap, move left, make it stop, and once again, uh, basket surrounded by trees. Who knows what kind of line you're going to get, even from Circle's Edge. They might at least be shielded a little bit from the wind in this tight, tightly wooded hole, but still making that gap is, is still an ask. Too wide from Colin. And a pretty good correction, but also going to find some high branches and tap to the right. Yeah, I'm not sure about that height on this shot. I think lower, I mean, as That's you can lower. see from Yuan, going flick roller. The local showing how it's done. <laughs> um, giving him a look, maybe not the closest birdie look, but he's at least making some progress up the fairway. And Andish also getting held up early. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously tight hole, but the shorter hole, you want to at least be having a look at the birdie. And looks like our card is struggling a bit, getting getting clean off of this fairway. Um, obviously, again, super tight. Um, and still not super close for Colin. And again, yeah, lead card, um, maybe just working through some jitters, cameras on them maybe for the first time. Um, and, and yeah, just getting... We also noted that it's early in the season for Sweden. For sure. Um, yeah, a lot of people having to train indoors. I mean, going for outdoor rounds, but maybe in a little bit of snow with some thick jackets and some, <laughs> some uh, gloves, but not looking too warm here anyway so it could be could be quite similar conditions to what they're used to during the winter that was a bogey putt so he will be coming back for five nice looking stroke from Linus confident strong in these prodigy baskets you definitely can can put the pace on yeah they love center hard putts and uh, that's you know, with, with windy conditions, you're already incentivized to putt that way. Bit more of a confident stroke from Andush, trying to, trying to forget those putting woes on hole three.
full seven. Um, definitely tight on this tee shot, but definitely just want to get through this gap, turning a little bit left out into this open area for this landing zone about here. And then second shot, pretty straightforward, but going into this protected pin, all these tight, uh, tight trees again, making the putting a little more challenging than usual. Absolutely. And step one is get yourself clean off the tee. Make it so that your third shot can be manageable rather than uh, having to throw all the way across the field and into the woods. Yes. Great shot there from you on getting out into the open. Uh, we saw you on um, round one, our card struggle a bit to get out of this gap, and it definitely proved to be even harder to get back out from off the fairway. So yes, this tee shot, tee shot definitely imperative to get clean. Good distance from Linus, but may have pushed a little too far. I like the speed control from Andush. Yeah, looking like he tempoed down, maybe even a putter, just to get out there. Um, and fair enough. I mean, just getting getting a clean look on the second shot is is de very rewarding. Distance definitely not the the biggest ask for the tee shot. Maybe coming up a little short on an upshot. Maybe have a long look at the three, but the wind wreaking havoc on this shot. But if it unwinds, it's it's a putt. That's great. Yeah, I was able to navigate those that first layer of trees. So that I mean, circles edge, putting for for his bird. You won from the sweet spot, getting yeah caught up in that first first layer of trees. So long look for the birdie. And from a similar spot, and getting the wind read, pretty good correction by Colin, but gonna come up short as well. Yeah, nice looking shape on that shot. Maybe just needed to push it a little bit further to the right to to enter that the biggest part of that gap. Andush maybe even just laying up for that easy par. You on giving it a bid, or maybe even a layup again. I mean, you can hear this wind on the on the coverage, and I think a lot of these players don't want don't want any stressful putts. But Linus able to connect for the birdie there. Great putt. He he definitely keeps his putt on line. It's a matter of whether the nose down uh, will stay above the rim. Colin just coming a little short on his putt. That looks like a birdie and three pars from our card. But yeah, Linus definitely has a confident putt. I think that's definitely a good thing to have in this wind. Um, even if it is a little off, but hitting yeah, chains or cage definitely helps not airballing it. Absolutely. Hole eight, 260 meters. An initial tee shot that uh, has a lot of room to work but needs to get to a specific spot to set up a second shot that will move left and the basket once again tucked into a, a pretty narrow gap in the woods yeah i think the ang to set up that angle for the second shot just to have that comfortable hyzer around around the corner i think that's definitely more important than getting big distance off this tee Linus looking to push it a little bit to the right, but should be able to navigate those those birches on the right. And another hyzer flip drifting to the right. This looks like it's going to stay center cut. Great looking shot from you, Juan. Crowd seems to like it. Yeah, hometown boy. Getting some, some hometown love. This Anders. is going to fade out early, isn't it? It's hanging on. Yeah, maybe just a little, yeah, picking up a little more stable disc in this wind, but looked like a great shape. Just a little early left, but par five, 260 meters doesn't, isn't a huge ask for distance, so should be able to just get around the corner and set up that third shot. Is that you saying that as someone who's played on the Disc Golf Pro Tour, or is this a typical par five for uh, a Swedish course? I think... I mean, par fives aren't too common, but um, 
I think this is a fair fair distance for a par five, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the the pin being tucked into the trees like that. Uh, definitely opens up the opportunity to go big on that second shot and just yeah roll the dice with those trees. But mm -hmm. um, I mean, throwing ninety meter hyzer, nine meter ninety meter hyzer, you don't have much left to go into that pin. So definitely attainable for all arms. And thus far, we're certainly seeing uh, some pretty well-played holes. That one, the best thus far. Yeah, Linus might even open up a long look for the eagle. Um, Yulon putting that a little high in the air, but had the distance perfectly. That and favorable is, roll, too. That was a very well-done shot. All right, gap shot left for Andersh. This would be pretty big to get his round back in gear. A rogue runner on the path there, maybe taking away his focus a little <laughs> bit, but didn't seem to be an issue. Sets up a five meter birdie putt there for Andish. Nice little forehand flex touch there and gets a little tree kick, but doesn't change the, the result too much. Nice looking birdie putt there for Colin. Linus finding his stance, and that, that looked like it had some want on it, huh? That was definitely an eagle bid. Um, I'm not sure how far, uh, maybe six meter comeback or there. So, I mean, fair enough. I want to get something going. One over for the round. And unable to sink his own eagle putt, but a routine birdie look. And Andesh going to start off our fourth shots with a good, so solid, strong putt. Definitely seemed to find his putting stroke uh, as we see the sun's coming out. Maybe he's warming up as well. A um, couple birdie, birdie looks here for the rest of our card. You won the last one. And nicely done. That's what you're supposed to do on a par five, right? Yeah, star frame. Um, I would say probably a softer par five, so nice to see everybody capitalize on that. Hole nine, uphill, 87 meters, blind from the tee. So you definitely have to trust your, your preparation on this hole. Uh, I see that they have maybe a really long flag pole on this one, but so you probably can see that from the tee. But yeah, just crest the hill. Don't go too long. Um, it falls away a little bit behind the basket, but... Linus looking fairway or a mid. Flew more like a mid, so very like nice speed control there. Medium stable disc just to kind of hold the angle he puts it on. Yeah, great looking stroke there. Um, should be a nice opportunity for another birdie. Johan significantly more inside. Does get some flip, so may get a look out of that. Yeah, maybe hard to get that, that height right with that hyzer angle, but he is also the local, so... Showing him how it's done. Couldn't quite see that finish, but looked like it's a little bit off to the right, so maybe a longer look for Birdie from Andish. And this drifting as well yeah. runs to the backside, but will be a Birdie look. Yeah, pretty easily done with, looks like a fairway driver from him. But um, yeah, a little, little more action than you'd like, but I mean, rewarded with a, a not, not the scariest birdie mm -hmm. look, looking away from the hill. One look like an, another layup for an easy par. And good focus to get himself a less than a meter putt. No reason leaving it at three meters and having to think about it. Sorry. Very nice birdie from Colin, putting him at one over for the round, six under for the event. I'm just cleaning up his par as well, and Linus with a tap-in birdie. Three in a row there, so he's he's starting a, a nice round for him right there. We thank you so much for joining us for Gatekeeper Media's coverage of the Skona Open. We see... Linus, our only player under par right now, uh, but plenty of scoring opportunities left to come on the back. Max, what are you thinking about? 
definitely. Um, yeah, Amdaj definitely wants to forget about that whole three, but otherwise, keeping it together, getting some stringing some birdies together. So hopefully, you can keep the putt going. Well, we're delighted that you've joined us, and be sure to find us on the back. Like, subscribe, and share so that the Swedish Disc Golf Pro Tour can get some more traction.